Hello, this is Mike Simpson. Welcome to Java Development with JBoss Application Server. Java and all Java-based marks in this course are trademarks or registered trademarks of Sun Microsystems in the U.S. and other countries. And JBoss is a registered trademark of Red Hat Incorporated. We're going to talk about some of the different items that we're going to cover during this course. By the time you get through this course, you're going to know how to use JBoss to implement a Java-based application server according to the Java 2 Enterprise Edition, or J2EE, standard. You'll also get a broad overview of JBoss's features and capabilities. We're going to highlight how JBoss gets integrated with databases. We're going to look at JBoss's security features. We're going to look at how we customize JBoss. And we're going to look at how we integrate JBoss with Java. We'll balance the instruction that we're going to provide you with some hands-on exercises. So we're going to make sure that you understand and confirm the mastery of the concepts that are covered during each module. Now, what are the different objectives that we're going to cover during the course? We're going to go through those objectives so that you can kind of have a mental checklist of the kinds of things that you should be learning during the course so that you can assess your own progress during the course. You're going to understand how to explain the purpose and the benefits and the features of what an application server is. Because an application server might be kind of a nebulous concept and you want to make sure that you understand what that is. You're going to understand how to perform installation and basic customization of a JBoss application server. You'll understand how to install, how to configure, and how to deploy Java J2EE applications in a JBoss application server. And just to make sure, J2EE stands for Java 2 Enterprise Edition. We don't want to go too far without explaining some of the different acronyms that we're using here. We want you to make sure you understand how to configure application-specific security within a JBoss application server. You may have different applications where you want to have specific security, like managers and users and roles and things like that. And so you want to make sure that you understand how to configure the specific security that you need within that server. Then you'll also want to know how to expose some of the different pieces of application functionality as a web service from within a JBoss application server. And then finally, you'll probably want to integrate a JDBC, that's Java Database Connectivity, compliant database of choice with a JBoss application server. Now, JBoss by default will come with a particular database that you can use, and that particular database that you can use is a hypersonic database, HSQL, but you may want to integrate JBoss with a different database. For example, you might be using MySQL as your database of choice, or you might want to use Oracle. So as a result, you may want to integrate JBoss with one of those different databases. Well, you can integrate JBoss with any database of choice as long as it supports JDBC. So we're going to show you during the course how to use JBoss with a JDBC compliant database so that you can use it in place of HSQL. Now, in going through this course, we're going to expect that you have satisfied certain prerequisites because there's certain background that you need to have in order to get the most out of this course. What kind of a background should you have? Well, in order to get the most out of this course, you should have one year of prior hands-on experience with Java. You should also have some previous experience with developing Enterprise Java Beans, or EJBs. Now, if you haven't had that kind of experience, this is going to be a very difficult course for you because we're going to presume you've had that kind of experience working with this stuff. Now, let's talk about some of the different topics that are going to be covered during the different modules in this course. First, we're going to have a module that's going to introduce you to JBoss and help you get started with the stuff. We're going to talk about downloading and installing the, the software. Then we're going to go under the hood of JBoss, get you into a little bit of detail about how it's set up and how it's configured, talk about the different directories and things like that. 
Then we'll talk about using Java 2 Enterprise Edition applications and how we use J2EE applications and how we set them up to work with JBoss. Now, since JBoss is an application server, a program that's used to integrate and configure and secure J2EE applications, we can basically take our J2EE applications and run them in JBoss, but there's a little bit of configuration that needs to be done to get them to work properly in JBoss. So we're going to need to do a little bit of configuration work to get them to work properly. So this module is going to be used to help us get them set up. You may have some applications that you want to build for JBoss from the ground up as opposed to taking an existing application and customizing it for JBoss. So we're going to have a module that teaches you how to build an application for JBoss from the ground up. Today's applications have different security requirements, so you're going to need to know how to secure a particular application. You may have some applications that have some things that can only be done by end users and some tasks that can only be done by people in different roles, such as managers and supervisors and things like that. So we need to be able to partition the different tasks that are done in our application among different roles. And so to be able to do that, we need to be able to establish and maintain security within JBoss. And so we're going to be setting that up. That security needs to be integrated with the Java 2 Enterprise Edition or J2EE security model. And so we're going to have a module that deals with that. Continuing with our discussion of module topics, we're going to have a module that looks at the Java Messaging Service, or JMS. Now, the Java Messaging Service allows different elements of Java, different Java applications, to communicate with each other by sending messages back and forth. Now, Java uses a technique called JMS to communicate back and forth between Java beans, and Java beans are different reusable Java classes. And we can have Java message-driven beans that communicate back and forth by sending messages to each other. And message-driven beans can be integrated together within JBoss. And so we're going to use message-driven beans as a means of communicating back and forth. So JMS provides a means of communicating. And so we're going to see how JMS and message-driven beans can work together within JBoss. Then we're going to talk about a concept called Container Managed Persistence, or CMP for short. When we change information within JBoss, we have two mechanisms for being able to save that information back to a database. Now, being able to save information back and have it be saved uh, back to our database is known as persisting that information. We can have the container, that is, the JBoss application be charged with knowing when data has been changed and having it save it back to the database and have it load it back. That's container managed persistence. Or we could have each of the individual beans that are involved be charged with knowing when it's changed and knowing when to save it and when to load it back. And that's bean managed persistence. Now, container managed persistence is what's used more often because that frees up the bean from having to know about it. And so we're going to talk about how container managed persistence is done. Then we're going to have a topic on JBoss and web services. Now, the nice thing about web services is that the capabilities that we create using our JBoss enterprise managed beans can be made available to applications that are used all throughout the web. And so by using those applications throughout the web, we can expose those JBoss mechanisms as Java-based web services. So they can be made available to anybody that uses a web browser. So our JBoss mechanisms can be exposed as web services. And so we're going to see how we can package them up and expose them as web services. Then we're going to have a technique we were going to show you how JBoss can be used with other databases. As mentioned earlier, JBoss does come with a built-in hypersonic SQL database, and that's useful for testing purposes, and that's also useful for when we have to save information back from JBoss to a database, but it doesn't have to necessarily survive a JBoss restart. 
However, we may have situations where our JBoss information may need to be integrated with another database. You may already have an existing database such as Oracle or MySQL, and you may want to have that information be integrated with that database. Or you may just not want to use hypersonic SQL because you have another database of your own. Well, that's perfectly fine. As long as your database is a Java Database Connectivity, or JDBC, compliant database, you can integrate JBoss with it very readily. So we're going to see how JBoss works with that. So our discussion of JBoss and other databases will illustrate how that works. Then we're going to have a final discussion on JBoss's security configuration in general, where we'll go into more detail as to how to configure JBoss and its security features. Now, we have some lab exercises for you, and those lab exercises will allow you to go through and confirm your understanding of the different topics that we cover during each of the modules. Now, the lab exercises that we have can be downloaded from the paperclip link. So go ahead and click on that link as you go through each of the modules, and then you'll be able to download each of the lab exercises. If you have questions or comments on any of the items that are covered during this or any of our other presentations, feel free to use the question and comment box. That brings us to the end of this presentation. Let's go ahead and get started.